Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A, the UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 46, streamed live on March 23rd, 2019. My name is Dalton, and our regular cast of characters are here. I'm joined by Marius. Hey! Jan. Hello. And Florian. Hi. Everyone's here. We should get a celebration for this. Yeah. That was the worst celebration. <laughs> we have a packed roundup of news and questions this week to get into, so why don't we just get into it then? Especially since you guys just disappointed me so much. Let's start with Core App, shall we? Uh huh. <laughs> so we had a few Core Apps get a few big updates in the past two weeks including, I think, the most important, the calendar. Have any of you guys tried this out yet? No. All right, so... <laughs> no. Please show it to us, Dalton. Show it. Yeah. <laughs> the new calendar update has a tabbed UI, which goes across the top of the screen. There we go. Ooh. To switch between day, month, week, and year view and agenda view. It was quite fast. Maybe you can show it again. I think people didn't see it because Mario said, ooh. Okay, there we are. Tabbed UI. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Who made that? Uh, people. I the remember. People the the community. Okay. Go, community. Good job. That's awesome. I'm sorry. I am a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think it was a few uh, merch, uh, pull requests there, um, but... Um, Mainly, um, who's not I suspect the cyber sheep. Um, no, it was no, no, not no, no. cyber sheep. It was oh. not cyber okay. sheep. No. Okay. <laughs> I would. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other updates that mo the other updates we have include the weather app and the open store, both of which got translation updates in this fortnight. Fortnite. Both are very appreciated. If you'd like to help with translations, you can go to translate.ubports.com and all of those apps are there. We can thank Florian for that service. Don't thank me too much because we still have a few issues there. For example, Morph Browser didn't push its updates because I have an access denied exception that I can, can't fix or I didn't fix now. I have to do, dig deeper why it's happening only on that app. Right? And a few others are still not in sync, but because we moved stuff on GitLab, it was also time to redirect the translate site there. But it's for most of the apps, it's now done. And so, yeah, thank me when it's when it's really working for everything. Yeah. So um, I know we are still lagging a little bit behind, and people are translating, and then they are very, let's say, um, uh, confused why the translation is not in the latest app update. This still can happen because we are not fully synced, and also. Um, when a trend, when a main app maintainer releases a new version, um, he could ping me that uh, we push the pending stuff because it's only pushing once a week to not have so many uh, pushes and commits there. So we can still thank Florian for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you that you thank to me. <laughs> Um, there was a second uh, small question that I got, which is not uh, in our list here, but. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have the the small group of uh, of Sardinian users. Um, they are struggling with the translation still because uh, the core language packs are still not in place as they should be, and we are still having on our long to do list that we replace language packs one day um, with something more dynamic, which we have under our control. Currently, the thing is that we still rely on canonical translations for a certain amount of of things. And they are coming in language packs only for the supported language of, of Ubuntu Touch, uh, of Ubuntu, sorry. So uh, when Ubuntu doesn't support a language, which means it needs to be translated at least, I think, 70%, then we won't have a language pack for that. And that also means that we cannot consume it on our side from the upstream repository of Canonical. Uh, nevertheless, we will try to make a fix for that, at least for all the GUI parts. So you might still have the problem if you are in the shell um, and you're doing something with uh, with your terminal app or with SSH on the phone that you will have still missing languages. But for everything that's visible uh, in the graphical UI, we should be able to provide language support also for the non-supported languages. 
but it's still some some way to go as i talked about this already some time ago we have had a wonderful uh, merge from upstream on the uh on the uh, supported languages for for the locale settings from the from the iso stuff and um yeah things are getting closer but yeah we could also need a little bit of help on that if somebody wants to dig into language pack disassembly and restructuring them for pod files he's welcome it's yeah it's something that doesn't need too much programming skill more of understanding how can only organizes languages but yeah call to community maybe somebody wants to do that and because me. i will not leave that hanging it was christian who got the tabbed ui prototyped and into the calendar app i refuse to leave that hanging cyber sheep also did contribute new calendar colors which work in both the light and dark theme so that's another thing you can look forward to in that update the update is available right now in the open store go get it it is hot but a good hot what grab it while supplies last yeah yes I think that Jan has been doing us yeah. a few things, just a small, small little, lo little improvements uh, to our JavaScript-based installer and devices page this uh, past few weeks. Yeah, actually, this is uh, something that we have been planning for a long time now. I think we started implementing a new API that the installer gets data from uh, a year ago, and then we were planning to refactor the installer. Uh, in the weeks after that, but then so much other stuff came up. I mean, we have done a lot in the last year, so uh, the installer kind of suffered under all the other stuff we have been doing. Um, but yeah, we made great progress last week. I think before the installer had 400 open issues, now it's just under 70, I think. Um, and most of them I, are new ones I opened for future things that we still want to do. Right. So it is a lot better now. It works on Mac. It almost works on Windows. I think I, now I broke something again, but uh, we can definitely <laughs> fix that. Um, so yeah, it made great improvements. It, the code is a lot simpler. I think we removed uh, 500 lines from it or something uh, in total. Um, it is a lot more stable. It uh, just works way better. Um, and uh, yeah, we will we will make sure that it uh, always works in, in every situation. Right now, we, we also have to think about what uh, operating system the device that users are installing and is running before. And in some edge cases, it, if it's a really obscure de device, you know, if it's a really obscure operating system, um, we also, uh, depending on what the user does next, uh, we also can result in some heartbreaks. So just today, I had someone uh, mail me his one plus one because he heartbreaked it um and funnily he sent it to me in a vhs cassette box <laughs> so the installer didn't heartbreak it i think he made some uh, some funky stuff afterwards uh but yeah in the future this will this will be uh, a lot easier it will be really really straightforward and uh i'm i'm really looking forward to that and if uh, if you know some JavaScript or if you have some experience with Electron uh, or Node apps, um, especially cross 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 platform ones, um, that might be a good place to get involved because we now have some uh, issues on the installer tagged good first issue um, that are really easy to implement and that have some some direction how to get started, and it is. Um, a good place to get acquainted with a code base and uh, then possibly help make a piece of software that will make it a lot easier for users to install. I think there was one other thing, even with all of that, that you did too. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we, we have also have manual installation instructions now. Yeah, this is, this is something people have been asking for a long time as well. Um, so this is just instructions that you can execute on the command line. You can find that on uh, devices.ubuntu.touch.io. Um, so and there you can click on uh, install manual instructions. Um, and then you will just get some uh, command line instructions that you can copy and paste into the command line. And that will also install on your device. Uh, keep in mind, however, that that's a lot of text to read because every device is special in its own way. Uh, and uh, 
the instructions are automatically generated for every device. So uh, keep in mind, you thoroughly read that and it's recommended to use the installer, but if the installer fails, uh, this is something you can do as well. So this will also work. And it also does all the um, signature verification that the installer normally does and the, the recovery uh, normally does. So uh, it is also a secure uh, way that should not break any devices or uh, is not uh, prone to many of the middle attacks or something. Excellent. And that is a feature that has been heavily requested by frustrated people who can hack Android devices and don't want to use our GUI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially because the installer was a little broken before, or a lot broken in some cases. Yeah. Um, I understand that people were frustra frustrated that they had to use a GUI that was slow and broken and unstable. Uh, but just before, I, I don't know why we didn't think of the possibility <laughs> to automatically generate these instructions, uh, because um, the, the APIs that the installer gets the data from what files you have to download and what files you have to push to the device, um, they are not meant for humans to read. You can read it, but you will make mistakes. So it's a lot better to automatically generate them. And now it's, it's I think it's pretty elegant uh, for the complexity of the stuff uh, on the devices page right now. Mm -hmm. All right, we need to do this quick because otherwise the battery might die. Sorry to <laughs> cut you short, but Marius, what do you have there? Ooh, this is, I will... Um... I'll hold up one better so that yeah. this is so, the PinePhone developer kit. So this is the, the PinePhone development kit. And here, if I can move it a little bit down, you can see it's working. Um, we only got it this week. Yeah, we got it this week. Yes, and, you got uh, yours on Tuesday. I got mine on Tuesday. And uh, <laughs> I think I, I spent two, two straight days on hacking. And, uh, and now the, the screen is working. So... Um, it's pretty good. Yes, so we just got our Pine64 PinePhone dev kit version 1.1 in the mail this week. Mine came uh -huh. on Thursday. I started working on it yesterday. Um, and it's cool. It's really cool. I mean, it's really cool that we were able to get th something this quickly. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can explain shortly or briefly why, what's the difference to the prototype that we had already and what was showing off uh, already screenshots uh, with Unity 8 and this one, yeah. Well, first, I didn't drop this one. Yeah. That part is important. Um, but there is a small difference, and I can take the UART off of this. That doesn't need to be connected. <laughs> There's a small difference in size between the two. Um, but also, this... This is uh, roughly the same hardware that will be in the final device uh, with, uh, I got a American modem and everything. Uh, vibration motor, sensors, everything included on this one and a couple of cameras. So, well so, so to say it, say it easier is that um, this development hardware is, makes us so we can enable it for the hardware that actually comes on the phone. While on this, you can only do so much because, for example, the screen uh, is not the same. So we had to enable that all over again. Um, right. Since there, there is no Holium here, so uh, you have to do everything from kernel. And it's quite good. I, I love that. Let's make it clear. This is not how the final phone is going to look. It will not have an 18650 lithium ion battery in it or anything like that. Um, this is a roughly phone sized development kit. The final kit, or the final, well, first the final kit and the actual product will look like a phone. Yes. <laughs> Let's make that clear. Because uh, <laughs> I see that and I can see that going wrong. Well, in the last chat that someone is asking about uh, removable, ba removable battery, it's probably yes. going to have one, right? Because it is expected to have a battery. removable battery and also hardware kill switches for 4G front and rear camera and the microphone. And, and Wi-Fi Bluetooth. And it has a headphone jack. And it has a headphone jack. It also has a rectangular screen. Yes. No that notch. That part is important. No notch. That's pretty good. <laughs> I, 
I hate how that's something people ask today. <laughs> but also, it will have display out, which means that you can technically use it as a conversion device. Yes, we are also expecting to be able to have HDMI out over the Type-C port, as well as USB 2.0. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. That'll be the first device that we have with that kind of capability. It should be able to do both at the same time, I believe. Yes, I believe so too. Oh, anything we missed there? <laughs> it's gonna this be is slow. an amazing device. We should add that. It's going to yeah. be slow, but not, cheap. No, not necessarily, because um, it has a faster CPU than most of our devices currently. So not, so not kit tells me uh, it'll be around the speed, a little bit faster than the BQE 4.5 with twice the RAM. Yeah. So it should be very acceptable. Um, but you will be compromising if you're coming from like a Pixel 3 or something. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And um, it, is a, it is an all-winner processor, so it does have the interesting all-winner uh, why would anyone need a newer kernel than 3.10 problem. Uh, but it is getting mainlined pretty quick. And Well, to be honest, I don't think that's an exclusive all-winner problem. It's not exclusive to all-winner, but, you know... I think 99% of the ship manufacturers have that attitude. Yep. So, um, but as you can see, yeah, you, as you can see, you can't. But no, it's, we really uh, can't see. Ah, it's focus. an A64. It's an all winner A64. Yes, that's what I'm trying. Focus. It's not going to focus. There we go. Yeah. It's an A64. Good work. So that was an essential part of everyone's understanding of this device. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we covered that pretty quick because of Marius' uh, dead battery, but if anyone has any questions, you can toss them in uh, Telegram or YouTube live chat. We'll take them as we get them here. But yeah, I think this is a really cool device. I love how quickly we were able to get it, and I see this one going pretty far. Oh yeah, expected price. Hundred and fifty bucks. Hundred and fifty dollars with minus shipping and handling. That will be uh, added in when you buy it. But yeah, that's uh, probably if you're European. Hundred and fifty dollars. Hundred and fifteen, fifteen freedom bucks. Fifty. Fifty freedom bucks. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, any questions on that? Continue to put them in. Let's thank our sponsors, huh? So thank you everyone who is supporting us through PayPal, Patreon, Libra Pay, or you Bitcoin holdouts out there. <laughs> I don't stay think strong. it'll ever rise again, but stay strong. <laughs> it will. It definitely will. If you want to join them, you can go to ubiports.com slash donate and click on any of the links there. But I would like especially... Oh, I just punched my microphone right in the face. It had it coming. <laughs> I would like especially to thank our platinum sponsors, Smooze and Private Internet Access. And also a special thank you to DigitalOceanPacket.net for providing us with our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That's all I have there. And commercial block. I'm sorry? No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get into some questions. We take these questions for every show from our forum at forums.ubports.com. A thread is posted roughly on Monday every week, depending on whether Dalton gets the YouTube link out or not. Um, Later. And we take questions from there. We don't take all of the questions, as always, but let's get into some of them now. I, I want to take one quickly before we move on, since this is yeah. kind of in the same ballpark. Any news about the Libra 5? Um, so the thing with, with this is that we haven't got the development kit yet. We would like to have them, um, but we haven't got them. That's the, the short answer, TDLR, of that question. Yep. So, our first question this week comes from Tom. What are the future milestones of UbiPorts? 
I'm not seeing them on GitHub. Have you moved them somewhere? Everything is empty since OTA 8. Or have you just not planned any? <laughs> so, um, in OTA 8, I did change how we um, track our milestones a bit. So, sorry. We're now tracking every update through the projects feature of GitHub. And the reason we're doing that is because it lets us track from multiple different repositories in one place. So if you go to github.com slash ubiports and click on projects, um, right now the OTA 9 milestone as well as the Mir and Unity 8 upgrade are both there. OTA 9 is a little barren, I know, but that's because of the Mir and, OTA, or Mir and Unity 8 upgrade, which is happening in parallel. Um, the reason I did them in parallel is so that if we go long on this Mir and Unity 8 upgrade, things could always come up. I expect that um, we can continue to roll without worrying about that. And it also keeps the change logs clear because I like that better. <laughs> okay, that's my spiel on that one. What do we Thank have next? Um, Trenerio wants to know, it would be interesting to hear about the state of UT market share. And um, yes, he knows it, start, it starts with some numbers of zeros. Well, you know, leading zeros you can always remove, yeah? so it looks better. Yeah? So uh, even if it would start with number of zeros, we are not showing them. Yeah. What's the current WAG of the number of Ubuntu touch users on UbiPorts builds? Um, well, so, so this is a, a very interesting in question because, first of all, we don't have any measure of this. Um, we only have requests, um, basically requests that goes to the download server or system image server. Um, and also we have the, the push server. Um, I'm not up to date with the push server, um, but with, with the downloads, um, we, have, we have about 10 million requests to that server every month. But that's requests, so. Yeah. So that's like, there's like, what, six files for every update, and each one of those makes a request, and the request for the update comes before the, it's, yeah. Yeah. So I would like to make the case here that we need to start collecting a little bit of data on the devices out there. Now, before everyone starts to yell at me for that, because I know that's going to happen, <laughs> um, I think that we can do this in a very respectful way. Um, devices can report what they are, you know, what their storage is, um, any other variables in them like memory, because some devices can have more or less RAM. And when they check in, maybe every week, they can say, hey, I'm this device, and we can filter out based on the week or whatever it may be. That is not a very good explanation of the problem. I really need to write that out as a better. Um, but we need don't to, need that. I need to write that better. But I'd really like to make the case that in order to prioritize our work a little better, maybe we need to know which devices are out there a little better. Because right now our best guess of that is with the push server and not everyone needs to activate their device with the push server. Yeah, I think that's that's the point. I mean, uh, on one on one side, of course, we try to respect privacy um, on a very high level. On the other side, we have absolutely no understanding of our user base and what they need and what what's going on there. So we need to find uh, a trade off here. And I think everybody will understand that um, at least to know which models in which numbers we have out there would be great to know that we don't invest time in the in the wrong things to do. Yeah? Because, of course, we want to have the, the biggest impact or the, the, the fastest impact uh, by repairing maybe stuff for the most used devices and not for ones that are just a minority share. It's kind of a democratic problem, of course, because everybody could argue now, well, also the minority devices need support. But we are still in a phase where we want to stabilize everything and want to have the most number of happy users. So, yeah, unfortunately, that that's a leaning towards a majority vote and um yeah we, at least we try to carry on with the for the smaller device base of course we have another question also for that uh later but um 
also with the upcoming new devices, if we're really going to have now, for example, an Android free phone, we need to compare now, are the users shifting towards that, for example, yeah? Um, that's, that's some indications we need. We don't want to record any user profiles. We want to have device type numbers that are a little bit more, um, let's say, understandable for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we will document the process, the, the, the proposal, of course. We will also show everybody uh, how this is going to build up kind of a unique, I don't know, token or whatsoever from what Dalton said. But yeah, I think that's, and uh, probably we can also make it um, to be to be switchable so that you say, okay, you want to opt out of it or you want to need opt in. Let's right. see, we can yeah? pull an Ubuntu on that one, basically. Yeah. Um, and we already have the wizard, which runs on updates on some updates if we trigger them correctly. Um, and it can pop up a page that says, hey, do you want to help us out by giving us this data? So that's not a problem at all. We can make it opt in without a problem. The, pro the real problem is, of course, anonymizing the data correctly and um, making sure that we do that right. Also deciding what we can make public so that we can give some of the data back. You know, it's your data, you can use it too. <laughs> But I, I, I think the, the most important part is that we only do this for, for things we need. So we don't necessarily pull information. Oh, yeah, that. absolutely. Not take yeah. like ev not take all the data that we can get. No, that's yeah. No. We, and also we, not no other metadata like uh, how often do you use the device or something or pull, uh, ping every time you turn on the device. We definitely won't do anything like that. We we basically need uh, to see what devices are running what uh, well percentage of what's the most used device. I think that's the the, the base here. That's we the don't one. Yeah. yeah we don't really need it. Well we don't need anything else. Number of active <laughs> devices is ninth, but you know that's okay. Well we, we can, can calculate on. that based on how many devices type of there is, but we don't need to not even no country. But fuck, we don't need no, that. No, not really. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have to think about this uh, a little more, how to exactly do it in the future. But um, for total number of active devices, I don't know. I know this is really not an accurate number, but uh, it's probably still an interesting statistic. Uh, the UbiPods installer Snap package is currently installed on 2,300 devices. So that's, that's probably that's probably an interesting thing to know. This is keep in mind. This is one package. Um, that's installed through the official store on one of the platforms, uh, but still, it's uh, it's a number to work with. Yep. And okay. The goal is to get better numbers. So. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Let's um, move on. Uh, Loops is asking. I think this is from the forum. Yes. When the Pine phone and the Librem Five phones are released, will UbiPods consider them flagship type models due to their openness, and will development be focused on those devices? Well, I think as we just kind of alluded to, um, no, all device, all development won't immediately switch to them. That's not our plan. However, depending on how easy they are, things might come to them first, like. Um, for example, we're talking, just talking, you know, kind of prototyping, uh, what would happen if we moved from our current bind mounted overlay model, which is a bit of a hack to something like overlay FS. You can't do that on kernel 3.4, but you can do it on kernel 5.0. So we might be able to bring things like that. That should be faster and better to those platforms first. Um, and maybe some features would stay on the newer on those permanently. It's all kind of up in the air at this time, but actually, there's a second part of this question that uh, I forgot to read out, um, and that's uh, if so, will this mean that older models like the BQE5 and the BQE4.5 become unsupported? And to that, the question, uh, the the answer is no. Uh, they won't be right. they won't become unsupported as long as they work fairly well with uh, with what we are doing and they don't have any um, really critical um, uh, security issues that we cannot fix uh, due to licensing issues so for example uh, we won't deprecate any devices um, 
But of course, uh, we hope that in the future, the support in the community for uh, for uh, porting also gets uh, gets bigger, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not all on uh, very few shoulders uh, keeping those devices around. But no, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, at least for now, uh, your devices are safe. Yeah. I, I think the best the best estimate there is when uh, system D comes out, we probably will have some problems with those, but until then, I don't see any problem yet. Right. To put it succinctly, as long as there is no technical reason that we can't, we want to continue supporting them. Yes. So. All right. A question came in this week from Elaine. What is cur what is the status of sensors on devices that are running Ubuntu Touch? Um, he continues then, for example, NFC can be very useful. So. Yes. So, so the status of, of, um, of the sensors is, is a bit messy. Um, yeah. So Can Canonical made their own kind of wrapper here uh, or kind of a driver for Qt, which then goes through Libribris. Um, but for example, with, with Selfish, they use, um, what's that called again? Uh, sensors. Sensor four. Huh, okay. Sens sensor yeah. four. Sensor four? Sensor FW. Ah, yes, that's the case. And the plan is, is eventually moved to something that's upstream um, and, and that isn't unsupported like the sensor is, which may mean that we get more sensors with that. Um, NF NFC, I see that's uh, a quick uh, thing, but that's not technically a sensor um, because that doesn't go into the Android sensor API. So that will need to be implemented separately. Um, and I don't think Sailfish has support for that either. Uh, so I think we had to to build our own there basically, or use something near D or something like that. Um, right. Or to implement my, it the um, My investigation says that NFC can be handled by LibHybris. It's kind of in an experimental stage. But Android has two separate NFC halls that you can use, one for NXP and one for others. So Selfish actually does have. Okay. It hmm. does. Okay. Interesting. Do you know what, what they use? What sensor daemon they use? Yeah. Do you have a GitLab link for that? Might be in the Merge yep. project, but we can look into that a little more. Either way, it's not something that's likely to come in the near future. Um, simply because for first, we would really like to get on sensor FW rather than uh, Qt Ubuntu sensors. That'd be their first step. Only Ooh. supported by Yala's partner devices. Okay, that makes so sense. Probably closed source then. Yep, that's too bad. Probably because it's a huge pain. <laughs> yeah. Free Robux? Where did you go? <laughs> you don't see live yet? You, you probably have it only on top yet. You see live yet. Who have free... Who have Robux? Yam, give free Robux. Oh, geez. Sorry. I didn't see that spam. Yeah. Oops. I'll fix that. Um... Our next question comes. Oh, yeah, there's a next question from Jan. Where are you now on the new Mir and Unity 8? It's not from Jan. But... It's not from Jan. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, on, on the new Mir, we are kind of in a, um, in a state now where it, it starts getting there. Um, Mir seems to be pretty good. Uh, we also fixed uh, the buffer issue on Qualcomm devices, as you may know. Um, but we still have some paper cuts um, to fix um, that either broke or was never finished in the new version of Unity 8 that we need to to finish. Um, and I, I know Dalton has been, been working on that. Uh, there is what? There it is. New Unity. Oh, ah, yeah. There it is. So... As I said earlier in the show, the Unity 8 and Mirror upgrade is being tracked in a separate project on GitHub. 
If you go to github.com slash reports and click on projects, you'll be able to find the status of there. There are some breaking, there are still some blocking issues that make us not comfortable releasing yet or merging it into the regular cycle. So, um, so people can check this out on the Edge channel, right? Yes, if you can install the Edge channel, there are instructions to do that on the forum. The, uh, it's in the OS section called Living on the Edge because, yeah. That's where you're living. <laughs> Please don't install Edge on your daily device. Please, please, please do not. It is going to be broken sometimes. Well. Unless you're Marius, then install it on your daily device. Yes, but that's not what I want to say. I, I said that also, um, well, Dalton said that on, not on your daily device. Uh, if you have a development device, don't be afraid to install it um, because the installer, the UBPros installer can always get you back on, on Devil, for example. Um, right. There is no, nothing, nothing can be bricked because we are not working with, um, with bootloaders. Yep. Uh, his next question, I'm sorry, I didn't put your name in the document. It wasn't Jan. <laughs> is getting a stable Mir and Unity 8 the foundation of the continuation of the project? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So so the plan with in in this in the future is also to unify desktop and um and uh, and phones so we have the same code base. Right now we are split like Bionic has a newer one than we have on the phone. Um and that's the the plan to get up to track with those and have those equal and then we can start improving Unity 8 and and get stuff really 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 good. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Martin asked, any ideas what's the best way to debug non-bootable edge on MX4? Um, ping me on Telegram, because I can get you better uh, advice there rather than in a one-hour video show. It um, take longer than an hour to explain. And it will probably take longer than an hour anyway. <laughs> um, let's move on to our next question, Marius. Yep. Does the UbiPros project need an email client as a core app? And if so, what must be done to get it? Want to yeah. take that program? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, um, we have already an email client um, that is uh, Deco2 in this case, um, which is the continuation of the Deco project. Um, from the point of usability, it has still some issues, and I know where the question is coming from, because uh, here is the hope that when we pull in Deco as a core app, then uh, it will get uh, more stable and better uh, in, a, in a quicker way. Yeah? However, even if we put it into a core app, um, or we, we deliver it with, the, with, with our core apps on the, on the phone image, um, it wouldn't that much involve the um, more people necessarily to to bring it to a more sophisticated or a more stable state. Yeah? We know, of course, that Deco2 has still some issues, and uh, some of them are quite frustrating on a daily basis. However, um, the only thing to make uh, Deco better as an email client is to get uh, more developers attracted to it and more helping hands. Yeah? We don't want to bloat first the images with too many core apps. Um, you could argue now that an email client uh, could be a core app, but um, even if you look on uh, OS distributions nowadays, it's not automatically that they have a great email client coming with them. Yeah. Um, and it's just also that, um, let's say, um, we have currently in the, in the core team already a lot of things that are going on. Um, by taking in Deco as a core app would mean we need to uh, spend from our time more to that. And also, I think the community could expect, and ah, well, that's in core app. We don't need to do anything for it. Let just UbiPort deal with it. We don't want to have uh, that feeling around. So it's better to find more contributors uh, to Deco2 to get uh, a decent email client out of it. Because basically, it's a great email client. Yeah? It just has a few flaws and stuff that doesn't work now. So that's kind of a call again for developers that want to take a look at it. Um, yeah, Deco2 needs some love. 
um, but we will not promote it to the core app at the current time. Yeah. Um, we also don't start a new email client because there has already been a lot of effort going into Deco and Deco2. And uh, we think it, it's, it doesn't make sense to start all over again because then we will have again a lot of waiting time, a lot of um, bugs that will come up. Yeah? So let's try to finish Deco2 to be the real email client for you boards and Ubuntu Touch. That would be great. Um, and everywhere else as well, because it has um, actually a really great UI that really has this idea of convergence in mind, that it adapts to the desktop, it adapts to the phone. Um, yes. It works with both touch and uh, mouse and keyboard input methods. So um, it is a really great start, actually. Um, but the problems that are still there right now, they definitely can be solved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, www.decoproject.org. You can step by there. Um, and um, yeah, I think that uh, people will hear our call for that and we will, we will get some help from the community sooner or later because a lot of uh, things are going on in the community and we will come to, uh, uh, to on the last question, we will come back to this. So I'm pretty confident that we will also fix Deco2 uh, in such a way that everybody is happy at the end. Yeah, um, and really the goal is to also have it usable in a desktop way, so it doesn't need even to be uh, associated with UB ports or Ubuntu Touch in right. any way. Yeah. It's an app that is just, or an application that is just also great um, for uh, Linux on the desktop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be possible to be um, used on nearly every distro uh, if you remove a few dependencies maybe here and there. Um, but um, yeah, it's not only a phone app, it's a really full-blown uh, email client. And so it really makes sense to push it forward, yeah? to be convergent, to be uh, bug-free, to be performant and everything about that. It has already a great background service for uh, pulling emails off your servers and sending your local notifications. That's already much better than other email software for the phones does. And um, yeah, I mean, I know it's a little bit, uh, sometimes it pulls too many of them and gives you uh, 500 notifications per minute. I also have this. Florian's one. throwing shade now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so Deco2 is the email client still. We will not promote it to a core app at the moment. That There is no added value by doing it. Uh, instead, we are calling out for uh, people who want to help us with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. George had a question. How is there still not a single complete Holly import available for download? Ooh. This, um, ooh. Because so, George didn't make it yet. Because Jan didn't make it either. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's, yeah, it's kind of, um, but, it, but the thing is, um, especially the core developers at UbiPort haven't really got um, haven't had the time to do this yet. Uh, we have focused on upgrading Signal, and now we're upgrading Mirror, and we have upgraded, we have made Anbox, and we made a lot of stuff. Um, but at the same time, we also have been making it Holium compatible, and we are to a stage now where it is technically Holium compatible, um, but now the work of, of developers and Holium developers needs to... We have many devices, say, that works with Holium. And we have devices that actually works fairly well. Um, but all the pieces aren't put together yet. Yes. We are missing, for example, system image, so they can't do upgrades and stuff like that. Um, and these are issues that must be fixed before they are unable to be downloadable um, in that sense. I think something we need to do is put huge appreciation towards Notkit for this one, because yes. he has been killing it on on uh, Holium 7.1 and even 8.1 now, a little sneak peek there. Um, he has been the absolute kit. Or the absolute cat, depends on how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Nikita has been awesome. And he's yeah. an awesome person. Um, for example, what's also missing is a proper recovery that will install our upgrades. Yes, that's um, the system image part. Yeah. And um, just to, to, to see a little bit more what, what uh, yeah, 
what are the blockers for having the nice experience you use the installer you install the Halium port and everything works well and to be and honest you don't care that it's Halium. yeah and you won't you won't see also that there is uh, the same let's say fluent um, experience that we have with the classic ported devices yeah um, so a few bits are missing here and um, Marius you were talking about mere compatibility right um, with mm -hmm. Halium before just to stress this once more, there are still issues with that, and you won't be happy with having no GUI at all on the Halium port. And yes, I think we know that uh, we we a little bit tension the people over time because everybody said, "Ah, oh, with Halium everything will get easier," and now it seems not. But um, yeah, we'll get there. The end, we get there. Yeah, uh, it's already. I must say, I tried to to validate documentation again by porting a few things and. Um, I gave another shot on my Samsung S3 Neo, and I had it actually ported and booting Halium in uh, less than three hours, I think, uh, including already compile time for everything. So the documentation for Halium is great. A lot of people um, are doing that. The devices page or the, the tracker page on the Halium GitHub is full of devices. Um, of course, they all have their own problems. Maybe also hardware enablement was not finished. But at least uh, there is a huge interest. And currently, I think there are over 500 members in the Halium group. Mm -hmm. So when you compare it with our supergroup, which is at 2,000 something, that means uh, yeah, more or less 25% of the people that we have in interested in new reports at all are also interested in porting. Yeah. Or Plasma Mobile or Luna OS. Or... Yes. We yes. aren't the only ones on the project here. Yeah, true. Um, Still also, um, it's a great uh, hub for uh, cross-project uh, communication, let's say, when you mention this now. And um, we got a lot of help also from those people. So we also should give a big thanks to uh, the people from uh, from PlasmaRes and also Sailfish people and so on and so on. They are all in the Halling group. They are all trying to, to work, go to the same goal. And um, so, yeah, I think that's the answer for the question. We are still working on beats that are necessary but mere upgrade will also rock for us and um, we also need this for for ubuntu touch of course yeah. and for our edge channel and everything will come together mm -hmm. i yep. think that it should be very clear you said uh you talked about the documentation the documentation contributors for Halium are some of the best people i have ever worked with <laughs> that documentation is great and it's thanks to them uh donix democrat Bushan, we have to thank Bushan. Hey, Bushan's from the KDE project, by the way. We have to give him shade. Apishek, LNJ, thank you, everyone. I also wrote to that. Never thank me. Sorry, you're pretty far down on the contributors list. <laughs> because I'm the, I was the first. <laughs> because you were the first one. <laughs> yeah. Oh... So thank you again, everyone who's doing that. All right. Shall we move on to our last one? Mm -hmm. Florian. <laughs> where, where is my unmute button? Where is my unmute button? Okay. <laughs> there is a question from uh, Trenerior uh, once more. Uh, what do you feel um, about the state of the core development and the community with rich respect to each other? Um, means the state of, let's say, the, the relation between core developers and the community. What are the pain points for core developers, things they wish the rest of us would do or stop doing or do better? And what are the things that the about the community or the community is doing that excites us, the core developers? And um, yeah, I think um, that's time for Dalton again because uh, he's our community uh, leader. The first problem I see with this is the split between us and the rest of the community that is implied in this question, where, sure, both Marius and I work full time on this, but we're still the community. Um, there's not really this big split where we are better than anyone or our code is better. In many cases, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> I can confirm that. He can confirm that. He has to wade through it all <laughs> and review it for us. <laughs> but My code is the best. 
<laughs> I don't think there's any. I don't think there's really anything that I can say that I think that you should stop doing because I am somehow better than you and have control over you. That's not really the case. Um, however, I would like to say some of the things that we are all, as the community, are doing that are super cool. Florian put this one in. Hackathons that are organized by... I mean, the ones that are organized by the German community. That's super cool. People are organizing events about Ubuntu Touch and uh, teleports, the Telegram app, and all of this. That is so cool. Um, yeah, I have to say I'm really surprised by the the, the German Uberforce team. Um, their hackathons. Uh, I have wanted to go to them so many times. Um, yeah. <laughs> I always couldn't. Uh, I wanted to go. Yeah, I wanted to see the German people, but <laughs> well, the year before the team from Germany um, and Austria. I mean, even having first-time contributors coming into the project every time that happens, it just makes me so happy when people come in for the first time. Right now, I'm uh, reviewing a PR on the Unity 8 Wizard, and it's like. This is the first time you've been here. This is awesome. I love it. <laughs> it makes me happy. And it, was, it came from a good first issue that we put up. And mm -hmm. um, we've been going back and forth. The guy is awesome. And yes, yes, I love it. We need more of you. I love everything. I love this community, truly. I do, too. I love um, you. I... All of you. <laughs> but I don't okay. want to take the whole floor here. Does anyone else have anything they want to say about this? No, I, I think Dolph no. mentioned uh, a really good point here is um, we are as much community as you are too. Um, even though we are the core team, um, that doesn't mean we are not community. It just means that we are controlling the community in one way. Not really. Well, not really either, but we are um, we are making the train go on the right track. <laughs> Sometimes. Another but, one of those tran another one of those uh, yeah. <laughs> Norwegian translations went wrong. <laughs> we, yeah, we are m making the train go on the right track. I think that's a, a pretty good Maybe thing you're just seeing it. Oh yeah. Um, while while everyone is on board the train, we are still aboard the train ourselves too. We're just making sure everything goes smoothly, and uh, and and also, of course, there has to be someone accepting those fuel requests, and and that's where the the core team comes from. It doesn't mean we are not community. It just means that we have authority to accept that. Because we can request. accept the pull request. Yeah. <laughs> And you can become core team too if you contribute. So it's not Absolutely. it's not that it's not that we are only core team. No, core team exists of the people that that contributes. Um, so when I stop contribute, I'm no longer core team. But uh, this is this is uh, because the question was also about what could we probably do better. Um, this is probably something that we could actually do better, uh, make it easier for people to contribute, for example, improve yeah. documentation. In many areas, it already uh, is improving a lot, um, but uh, it's still something we can improve on because it's a learning progress for, for, uh, for everyone, right? Um, uh, I'm including myself in this, of course. Uh, improving documentation, uh, improving accessibility, impro improving maintainability of the code, so uh, you can make sure that other people understand it as well, and not just you, if it's uh, a component that probably someone else should also be working on. Um, so, of course, there's still uh, room for improvement, but I think uh, we have already come a long way, uh, we, everyone. And uh, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that also it's a it's a really valid point um, that we we have room for improvements definitely. Um, but at the same time, I think also we are had done great 
um, better than we did a year ago. I hope at least. Um, so I, I hopefully we are improving, but we have room to improve even more. <laughs> we are improving. <laughs> we are improving. Absolutely. Yeah. Whew. Whew. So I will take a, a question here that I see oh. come up a lot on the live chat. Um, is um, not a lot. I, I will take this one first. Um, okay. <laughs> you take that one. <laughs> yes. So um, it's pretty cool that Chrome OS will soon be able to run Linux apps. Um, I, I think he means that. He says true Android, um, but I don't think it goes through Android. I think it's just a, um, a CH root. Um, but what you touch can already do this. Um, yeah. They are technically Linux X apps, all of them. Uh, but I, I understand what you mean. Uh, you can do this through something we call Libertine, uh, which you can install desktop packages and, and run them like Firefox or whatever. Um, so yeah, you can do this already. And and uh, since he mentioned Android, and I see a lot of questions about running Android apps, yes, we are working on this. Uh, we are working on something called Anbox. Um, but we we need to to finish everything else before starting something new. I think that's a, a good thing. We need to finish upgrading everything, which is the the mirror we talked about earlier. Once we do that, we can actually start pouring effort into it um, because we need we need the ground before we put the soil on top and the flower. There's another one. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the only reason I come to these anymore is because of Marius's great <laughs> translations. <laughs> that was not lie. even a translation. That was just coming up with something. <laughs> okay. I think that'll do it, huh? Uh, yeah. Sounds I good. think we are. The clock has... Um, My I clock heard... has gone off as it does yes. at this time. Only this time. <laughs> only on Saturday at this time. Every other week. Every other, other week. week. Unless we delay it. Because so thank I you was... everyone for watching this episode of the Ubuntu Touch Q&A. We will be back in two weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the end of UbiPorts for this time. You can always get a hold of us on all of these social networks, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Mastodon. Google Plus is slowly going into the night. Diaspora. For Rip. Um, we will have an after party for this today if you would like to join us we will be posting that link in the super group pretty quick if you want to get a hold of us in real time you can do it on matrix uh, uh, or telegram or IRC all the information you need for that is in the description I don't think I missed anything there so, and forum. Forums.ubports.com. We'll see Bye. you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Join us Bye. 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 Bye.